Hi, I'm Domenica from Sunday Slays Cosplay, and this video is how I made Red Sonia's axe. It's made of two and six millimeter foam and some half round foam dowels with some PVC pipes, some leather straps, and two 3D printed pieces. It also comes apart for easy storage and transport. There are many ways to make an axe. This is just how I did it, so I hope it's helpful. So first things first, I need to see what size to make the axe. I got a two inch diameter PVC pipe and just made a mock-up out of cardboard. This mock-up was a little small, so I added about two inches to the height of the axe blade. After measuring, I brought a photo into Illustrator and used my pen tool to trace the shapes around all the details of the edge. There are lots of tutorials on YouTube on how to do this. If you'd like a more in-depth tutorial from me, please say so in the comments. Since my 2mm foam is in 9x12 sheets, I had to split the design up into two different PNGs. You need to cut this first PNG four times. If you don't have a Cricut, you could print this out and cut it out with an X-Acto. It'll just take a lot longer. I used the knife blade on a balsa wood setting, and I stopped the cut after the first cut. I then did this a second time with the second PNG, which needs to be cut twice. After I cut out all the detail pieces, I traced them onto paper to create a pattern for my base layers. These will be out of 6mm high density foam. I pinned down my pattern and started cutting away. I needed to cut four of these. After you cut four, two of each side needs to be glued together. Then you sandwich two together with your favorite contact cement, leaving the centers free of glue so we can insert a piece from the handle later on. Contact cement is bad for your lungs, so be sure to wear a respirator. Now this is the most tedious part of the process, gluing down these patterns. I found the best way is to gently move the entire cut from the Cricut sheet and then glue them on piece by piece while keeping the entire thing still intact. Then peel up the areas that aren't glued. I didn't need the detail to go all the way to the end, so I cut off the edge, then made the blade sharp. I roughly removed the majority of the foam away from the blade before using my rotary tool to smooth it down.
I also cleaned up all of the sides to make them nice and clean. Repeat this process until you have both sides of the blade complete and they're ready to connect to the handle. To connect these to the handle, I measured out where the centers would be, then drilled screws into the PVC pipe on each side. This gave my blades a little bit more support. I used sandpaper to roughen up the pipe a bit before smothering the pipe, screws, ends, and setters of the blades with contact cement, then pressing them together. You sandwich the screws between the center of the blades and hold them there until it dries. Then you repeat with the other side of the blade. And the basic build is done. Now for some more details. I added some four millimeter pieces between the two blades to make it look more like one solid piece. I used a heat gun to help bend it around. Then I added four millimeter pieces just around the top and the bottom. I primed all the plastic with plastic bonding primer, then primed all the foam pieces with plastic. I wanted the accent to detach from the handle for storage, so I used a PVC connector and cut the pipe just below the head. I glued one side of the connector to the pipe with super glue and then covered the seam with a small half round foam dowel. I also added these dowels to the top and bottom of the PVC pipe. For the metallic base coat, I used Rust-Oleum Flat Soft Iron and gave the entire thing a few good coats. Now for the detail painting. I went in and painted the Celtic details with Vallejo Old Gold.
I then generously applied a silver paint along the edge of the blade where it would be sharpened. I used a sponge to fade the bright silver out towards the top of the ridge. The most time consuming part was dry brushing watered down black paint into all the crevices, joints, and recessed parts of the blades. This adds depth and contrast. For the spikes on the top and bottom, I used my 3D printer. If you don't have one, you could find spike patterns online and make them out of foam. I got my model on Thingiverse under the title Junkrat's Tire Spike. Junkrat being from Overwatch, but it works perfectly for this purpose. As always, don't forget to tip your designer. I then brought the model into my slicer, duplicated it, and made them more narrow, with one being slightly larger than the other one. Once printed, I primed the spikes in black. Worth noting here that I had wrapped the whole pipe in long, thick leather strips that I had lying around from scraps from cutting belts out of natural leather. I took some of it off in the end, but for right now it's on there. I then super glued a foam dowel to the printed spikes, then dry brushed on the same Vallejo Old Gold color. For some final details, I added some highlights with a bright silver paint by Vallejo.
I then used a thinner dark brown leather string I got from Amazon to tie on and add texture and detail to the top. I didn't like how regular the thicker natural colored wraps were along the whole handle, so I added the thinner brown string, but then it was a little imbalanced, so I added a little bit of the natural leather on the bottom over it. So there you have it, Red Sonia's Axe. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're well on your way to creating your own axe, whether it be for Red Sonia or any other cosplay that you could apply it to. Please like and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram, Sunday Slays Cosplay, for more cosplays and still videos like this one. Hope to see you there. See you later. Bye.